Hello to everyone, uh, thank you very much for listening. My name is Jose Luis Guzman from the University of Almeria in Spain, and this is a joint work together with Professor Tore Haglund from the Lund University in Sweden. The idea of this talk is to give you some insights about how to select uh, control schemes and Turing rules for FIFO control to deal with the uh, rejection of uh, measurable disturbances. When we talk about FIFO control, we typically have in mind the classical FIFO control scheme where the idea is to design in open loop a FIFO compensator uh, in this way by uh, dividing the dynamics uh, relating the disturbance signal with the process output over the dynamics relating the control signal with respect to the process output. Then what we expect is just a perfect re rejection of the disturbance signal in comparison with the uh, response uh, coming from using only uh, feedback control. However, as we can see here, in order to calculate the FIFO wire controller in a classical way, uh, we need to obtain the inverse of PU, which is not always possible. In those case, cases where it's impossible, what we get is this kind of responses, this oscillatory uh, behavior. So uh, some years ago, Professor Torre Harlan and I started to analyze uh, that situation, that problem, and we realized that it's possible to uh, provide tuning rules for fee forward compensators in order to improve uh, uh, the response uh, uh, for the low uh, disturbance rejection problem. As a result, uh, we obtained more than 15 different tuning rules for different uh, uh, metrics and by using the two classical uh, or the two feed forward control schemes avail available in, in the literature. You can have a, a, a summary or you can see a summary of all these ideas in the paper that, that this given here at the bottom of the slide. So at the end we have two control schemes a very large set of Turing rules and then our idea in this talk is to give you some insights to select uh, the rules and the control scheme. So as preliminaries, uh, let's consider that uh, we are using uh, a first order plus time delay dynamics for our uh, uh, process. This means that you can have of course high order uh, dynamics in your process but uh, you should be able to approximate th approximate those uh, dynamics by first order transfer functions plus time delay. Then as feedback controller, uh, we will use a PID controller that actually in this world we will use a PID, PI controller only. Uh, as tuning method, we will uh, use the classical lambda method and we suggest to use this value for uh, the lambda parameter in order to obtain a non-oscillatory behavior in closed loop. Regarding the fee forward compensator, uh, we will consider a leak lag uh, compensator that in the case of using the first order dynamics presented before, you will get an expression uh, like this. In the case of considering the non-interactive control scheme, you need to add this extra H block that should be designed according to this uh, expression. So let's present uh, an example to uh, introduce or to motivate uh, the idea of the tuning rules. Uh, where the dynamics for PD and PU are given in the following way. Then when we try to obtain the fee forward compensator, we cannot just add the uh, delay uh, because uh, we have an inversion problem uh, 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 because the delay of PD is smaller uh, than the delay in P3. So because of that, when we implement this leak lag compensator without the delay, only the implementable part, we get this strange oscillatory behavior as I said before. What is interesting here, if you compare the closed loop response together with the open loop response, when I mean open loop response is just only by using the feed forward compensator without uh, 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 using the feedback controller, the response in closed loop is worse than in open loop. So this got uh, uh, took uh, our attention some years ago and we started to analyze uh, what is happening there. And then uh, we realized that the problem is that when we think in feed forward compensators, we design the feed forward controller in open loop. And then we also decide the feedback controller separately uh, because it's supposed that the disturbance signal is going, is going to be rejected perfectly. However, when we have inversion problems, this rejection is not perfect anymore. And then there is an interaction between the feedback controller and the feed forward compensator that wasn't expected. The reason is that now this term is not zero anymore and this term is feedback into the loop. It's what we call residual term, which is the effect 
of the no inversion problems in the feed forward control schemes. So now we have a interaction between the feed forward and the feedback uh, controller that wasn't expected. And this is the reason of this oscillatory behavior. What is interesting here is that uh, that behavior uh, in open loop uh, can be analyzed uh, observing the dotted line uh, here. Is the result of applying just in open loop a feed forward compensator. And here we can see that by tuning the pole of the leak lag uh, uh, feed forward compensator, we can change the shape of the response. So we observe, we realize that there is room for improvement in the responses against to the uh, uh, low, uh, low rejection uh, signal effect on, on, on the control algorithms. So we started to analyze that problem and then we were able to develop different tuning rules for feed forward control schemes. The rules were developed uh, for the two uh, feed forward control schemes available in, in the literature. For the classical control scheme, the idea was just to design uh, the feed forward compensator considering that interaction now between uh, the com feed forward compensator and the FIFA controller. And in the case of using the non-interactive uh, control scheme, the good point is that thanks to adding this extra H block, you can actually separate uh, 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 that interaction. I mean, you, you can remove, uh, better say, that interaction between the feedback controller and the feed forward uh, compensator, and they can design uh, uh, separately. So as a result, uh, we just uh, uh, studied the different inversion problems, inversion problems for time delay uh, uh, systems, uh, which is the typical inversion problem that you can find in this kind of um, uh, feed forward control schemes. Also the presence of uh, non-minimum phase dynamics or the integrating uh, behavior. For all these cases, we develop different tuning rules to minimize different metrics, the integral absolute error, the integral square error, and just to reduce that strange overshoot appearing in the closed loop response. So at the end, we got 15 different tuning rules. Uh, here you can see that table that I presented you before is an example uh, only for uh, the uh, time delay inversion problems. And you can see here, you can design, design a, a static feed forward compensator or a lead lat, uh, uh, feed forward compensators and depending on the selection you, you, you substitute the gain, the pole and the zero for the compensator uh, to select the control scheme uh, you desire, the, the classical control scheme or the Brosilov scheme which is the non-interactive one and the metric you would, you would like to apply. So according to that you are able to design the feed forward compensator based on the process parameters. Uh, here you can see a, a, a couple of examples uh, for the classical control scheme and to minimize the integral uh, absolute error. The idea of this rule is that you need just to set the, the zero of the leak lag compensator in a classical way, and then you need to reduce the pole and the gain of the feed forward uh, compensator. What is interesting here is this rule for the gain, because it was the first time that the feedback control and the feed forward compensator were coupled in the design. So it means that we need to reduce the gain of the feed forward compensator when we have inversion problems and we are working together now with the feedback controller for the low uh, disturbance reaction problem. On the other hand, for the non-interactive control scheme, we also develop a very interesting rule where we fix the gain. It's not necessary to reduce it now because we don't have that interaction between the two controllers, as I told you before. And then we again fix the zero and we only tune the pole to achieve a different objective. The integral square error minimization, integral absolute error minimization, or just to remove the, the, the overshoot. Uh, in the following uh, results, you can see the, the effect of applying these ideas to the previous examples I saw you before. And you can observe that in the classical control screen, the improvement is quite high with a very important reduction in the overshoot and in the integral absolute error. And the same happened uh, by using the non-interactive uh, control scheme with important reductions in the different metrics that we try to, to, to minimize. So according to select the uh, one of the tuning rule, what we did was just to obtain for all the cases, I mean, uh, the static feed forward compensator and the leak lag co compensator for the classical and non-interactive uh, control scheme, the optimal value of the parameters. So we develop an optimal algorithm to get uh, uh, the static feed forward compensator, a lead compensator optimizing only one parameters, two parameters, or three parameters. 
for the different metrics, the integral absolute error in this picture and the integral square error in this other picture. So at the end, we compare all the optimal solutions and we observe that the blues, uh, blue ones are those uh, uh, giving the best result, the optimal values. And then what we did is just to compare these optimal values with our rules. And here you can see the, you can see the comparisons. You can see how uh, the optimal uh, 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 rule is the one uh, presented in solid line. Uh, uh, and then we are comparing all our rules with uh, that optimal solution. And you can observe in the different metrics, our rules are quite close to the optimal values, especially in the case of the integral uh, absolute error uh, metric. This comparison can be also done uh, uh, quantitatively. Uh, here you can see uh, a table presented all the rules for the classical control scheme and the uh, non-interactive control scheme, the optimal values that we obtain from the optimization procedure, and the values that we obtain by applying our rules. If you compare the different metrics, which all of them are normalized with respect to the feedback controller result, you can see that there is a very large improvement with respect with the feedback. Of course, the, that was expected. But also, if you compare the resulting metrics from the optimization uh, analysis with respect to our rules, they are also very close. Another interesting point here is that one, one can observe that all the rules suggest to reduce the original values uh, obtained by the classical uh, tuning rule method for fee forward compensator by dividing the two dynamics. Uh, uh, that we presented at the beginning. So we need to reduce the gain and to reduce the pole or the zero to improve the, 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 the behavior. And also an interesting point is that the ratio between the poles and the zero is important to obtain a, a, a proper uh, 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 close rule response. This can be also observed in these uh, 3D plots. In the 3D plots, we are representing the, the, the best value of the classical control scheme for the integral absolute metric um, for the integral square metric and at the same for, for the non-interactive control scheme, which is called Brosilov here. We can observe one thing, which is that the optimal values in the two schemes are really close. Another interesting result is that uh, the variation of the pole and the zero is important to improve the response, as you, we can observe. Another interesting point is that if we keep the original values of the Ligla compensator for the pole and the zero, it means that if we fix the pole, the pole to the original value, we need to reduce the zero a lot and vice versa. And this happened in the two metrics. And also it's interesting to see how in the case of the Brusilov scheme, the variation of the poles and the zero is more important than in the case of the classical control uh, architecture. Um, also, it's interesting to see that, as we observed in the previous table, the ratio between the poles and the zero is also very relevant. And depending on the ratio, we will get uh, an optimal, a, a better optimal uh, uh, result. Actually, comparing the two metrics, we can observe that in order to reach a better result for the integral square error, we need a, a larger ratio, which means also a stronger control effort. Uh, however, in the case of the integral absolute error, we, less, we, we need a, a, a smaller ratio between the poles and, and the zero. Uh, also, in, if we compare the two schemes in this picture with the previous table, we could observe, observe that the, that ratio is less necessary, or is smaller, better say, in the case of the Brusilov scheme than uh, in the case of the classical control scheme. So uh, it's also a, a, a result to, to, to be in mind in order to select the control scheme, but because a smaller ratio means less control uh, effort uh, uh, in the control signal coming from the fee forward compensator. So as a conclusion, uh, uh, we have presented a motivation about the need of using or providing tuning rules to improve the responses uh, uh, by using fee forward compensator or fee forward control schemes. We presented the different control al uh, schemes and different uh, rules available that can be tuned using the process parameters. And then we compare all of them according to the optimal results. And then we also uh, uh, analyze the effect of the poles and the zero, and that, that ratio uh, between the poles and the zero is really important to select not only the rule, but also the control scheme. So thank you very much. I really hope that this talk uh, has been useful uh, for you. Bye-bye.